In school, a child who is eligible for an individualized education program has certain rights and laws that the school districts are obligated to follow. In the cases that an IEP is not being followed, here are the steps to make sure it is or will be implemented. First, the teacher or case manager. To start, if the problem has gone on for only a day or two, the first step is to reach out to the child's teacher or the case manager. It is possible that an email or phone call to the teacher could handle this confrontation. On the other hand, since the case manager is your point of contact for your child's IEP, it is vital to make sure that the case manager is doing their job and helping you and your child to get equal opportunities. Second, the principal and or special education building coordinator. If nothing gets accomplished from talking to the teacher or case manager directly, the next step is to address the school special education building coordinator and or the school principal. Here is where you and your child come up with an initial plan for the best possible education. When addressing these services, you should talk over the IEP and go over your own definition and interpretation and see if they align with the school's definition and interpretation. Oftentimes, school personnel may think that the IEP is being correctly implemented only because they have a different concept of what the document requires. Third, Special Education Director at District Level. After all else fails, the last step before taking formal action is to go to the Special Education Director at the District Level. Here, it is vital to bring to attention not only what is happening with your child's education, but also what is happening in the school that made you go all the way up to the district level. Here are some reminders during the informal actions. First, when talking to professionals, clear and well-presented communication skills are highly encouraged. Second, remember to stay realistic with your requests and allow the person you are contacting at least 24 hours to respond. Third, think about who is really needed at the meetings, the individual, a few people, the whole team, or the supervisors too. Remember, too many people can be overwhelming and harder to come up with an agreement. Fourth, be sure that when it's your turn to listen, be an active listener and keep an open mind on the suggestions made. Fifth, use I statements. And last, don't be afraid to repeat your questions if you're not being heard or answered. And always remember to ask for clarification when you are confused. Your best alternative to a negotiated agreement, known as BATNA, is the action that should be taken when you and your service providers cannot agree. You generally want your BATNA to be the bottom line of what you are willing to accept. Here are three suggestions on how you can accomplish this. First, create a list of actions you might take if no agreement is reached. Second, Convert some of the more promising ideas and transform them into tangible and partial alternatives. And last, select the best alternative solution. If the problem continues to exist after all the steps above are completed, the next set of action is to take formal action. For further information, please contact the ARC through the website or number shown on the screen.